and welcome to the Prairie Fiber Witch Podcast. I'm Sarah, coming to you from uh, Edmonton, Alberta, on the Canadian Prairies. And, um, welcome. Welcome. Whether you're new, whether you're returning, I'm so glad that you're spending some time with me. This episode's going to be a little bit different um, than regular podcast episodes. It's been a little, a bit since, um... I last posted an episode or a vlogmas or anything. I kind of abruptly stopped vlogmas. And the reason for that was um, there was a death in my family. Um, my uncle who had Parkinson's died uh, very unexpectedly and um, it just kind of threw all of us for a loop. I was in the middle of knitting him a second pair of socks um, when he passed, so yeah. I'm, I've been rather sad, um, knowing that I've lost one of my best sock customers. So he was a big fan of the socks that I knit for him. And I wish I could have had time to, uh, get him more pairs, but, um, so this episode is going to be a little bit different. I've decided, um, I decided over the Christmas break, holiday break and into the new year, I found myself with like a lot of projects next to me on the couch. Um, and suddenly I had like four active sweaters going. So I've decided to take a little bit of time to evaluate all of my whips and let, all of my whips, I mean all my knitting or crochet going back as far as I have uh, with me. I've been knitting pretty steadily, like, and pretty constantly since about 2007, so, and not necessarily always with an eye to finish everything, so, um, there are, I definitely have some projects that are, um, sort of long-standing whips or UFOs or whatever you want to call them, they're just hanging out and, you know, whenever I have a lot of projects going, I always think about the the ones that have just been sitting for a long time and um yeah i mean whips it are definitely a personal thing so like um i'm a firm believer of you have to make the your own rules for your knitting um and so while i don't mind having multiple whips going i mean you can see over here i've got a lot to show you um I don't mind having some whips on the go because, you know, sometimes I want to knit a sock, sometimes I want to knit a sweater, sometimes I want something complicated, sometimes I want something straightforward. So it's good to have a few different things to choose from. But um, there does come a point where it's like you have, like, I feel that it's, um, I have too many things um, unfinished and it sort of gives me a bit of sort of an anxious feeling um yeah so I'm, I kind of got to that point earlier this year and so I've decided to this is sort of my goal for this year is to go through all of my whips um decides what decide what's going to happen with them finish them if I want frog them if I want um and just sort of clear clear things off the queue um as I can and especially since um I do project tracking. Um, I just keep a spreadsheet where I keep track of like when I start a project, when I finish a project, how many meters uh, are either projected or I'm getting. And I also keep track of how many I actually used um, in a particular project. So um, when I was making my spreadsheet to start 2021, I noticed that my projected meterage was already like was already like 15,000 meters, which was as much as I knit last year. And that's only looking at my more, are only looking at things that I either worked on or started in the past year. So um, I think this could be a good project to just, you know, go through the year and work through some whips. Now I'm not saying that I'm not gonna cast on anything um, in the next year. Um, because I don't like to have limitations like that and rules, but I would like to make a concerted effort to um, finish a chunk of what I've got here. And so I've written a list of all of my whips 
I've sort of sorted them a little bit and determined what I'm going to do with some of them. Um, and I have, oh, is it? And it looks like I have 20 projects total that are in progress in some state on needles, on off of needles in some version, um, r like not finished yet. So um, I've sort of grouped them into five different sections and I think this is going to be probably going to be a long video because going through 20 projects, uh, but I'll try, I'm not going to give all the details of like what I'm knitting them on. I might give you information about the, the fiber that I'm using. I'll try and give a little bit of background on the projects to give you something interesting, um, but I'm not going to go into full detail. Once I'm like working on the project and finishing the project, I'll try and give more detail. Um, okay, so first things first, my newest whip is actually something that I cast on in January. I cast on a couple things in January and this was one of them. And this is um, a test knit sweater that I am allowed to show um, for uh, Sylvia McFadden, who is known as Soft Sweater on um, Instagram and it's her baleen sweater and it's a sweater that's knit um, from sleeve to sleeve uh, with this lace pattern and so I've just cast on the body um, yeah cast on the body and we'll be knitting sideways um, to the other sleeve so uh, I had signed up for this test knit uh, I think November and uh, got the pattern at the uh, on January 1st. So this is definitely my priority at the moment for knitting. Um, I, I'm using uh, Custom Woolen Mills Mule, Mule Spinner 2-ply, uh, which is spun here in Alberta. And this is yarn that I picked up at Custom Woolen Mills when I visited a few summers ago, uh, and I bought it at their mill shop. So this is a lovely peach. Um, I think I'll have enough yarn for this. I'm hoping so. So that's sort of a good straightforward working on this active project, new project, but you know, it does have a deadline, so it needs to be completed relatively soon. Um, my next thing that I'm also have been picked up and actively working on is something that I started um, back in last February. Um, and these are socks for my mom. These are the lollipop woods pattern. I don't know the designer off the top. I'll put it in the thing. Um, and like, if you've been watching for a little while, you know it doesn't take me a year to knit a pair of socks, like ever. So um, I think that's a testament to, not that there's anything wrong with the pattern, it's just not capturing my attention very well. So I decided to just like, I can get these off the needles. Um, I was about, I was most of the way through the foot on this one when I picked these up again. And so I've finished this foot, this sock, and I started the second one immediately, which is what I usually do, um, and have already turned the heel. So these will be done fairly quickly. And um, yeah, the yarn is really nice. It's uh, from Hello Yarn. Um, I'm not sure, I don't remember the name of the color. I, I'll put details um, such as yarn colors and stuff like that in the description box like I usually do simply because there's too much for me to go through absolutely every yarn that I'm using right now because we're going to talk about 20 projects. 20 projects! So that's two down. Um, these should be finished relatively quickly. They're being knit magic loop on a two millimeter needle. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to go in order on my list here. So these are all, this category is all what I'm actively working on right now. And so the third thing was, um, I had, before Christmas, I had, my parents had each, uh, picked out some yarn and a project that they, and a, a sweater that they wanted. And so, um, this is the one that I have cast on for my dad. This is the Tsubaki uh, pullover, which has these really great like giant cables, which are pretty interesting. So um, I'm just sort of working along on that. Um, 
yeah, I mean, more priority for sweaters has been given to the test knit, um, but this is hot on the heels. And it's the yarn I'm using is um, uh, Dererum Natura's Ulysse, Ulysse um, which is a lovely soft uh, wool base, which is lovely for cables, as you can see. And the color that I'm using is Iroise, I believe. So that's going to be a gorgeous sweater. Okay, so those are my three active projects at the moment. Um, I have about another five that are sort of pseudo active waiting for me to finish what's in the top category. Um, which are also fairly recent cast ons. The Subaki cat, uh, sweater I cast on in at the end of December. So yeah, I like end of December, beginning of January, I cast on like three sweaters because that's what you do. And then I got an anxiety about how many projects I had. So like, yeah, um, take take that information as you like. So what's uh, waiting in the wings? is um before christmas i was working on a sweater for my mom out of some yarn that she had picked out from sweet georgia yarns this is their um bfl silk dk and my mom we had looked at a, a lot of different projects and i had picked out or we sort of both picked out this cardigan by nora Gon, um which is called the calligraphy sweater and I alternated skeins um, to try and avoid pooling, but then ended up with these kind of terrible micro stripes, which I am not a fan of. So the zones where there were short rows or like on the sleeves, um, I didn't alternate skeins and it looks a lot better. Um, but something that I didn't do was gauge swatch for this sweater. So. I just wanted to knit it really fast and get it done. And then when I blocked it, it grew, of course, because it's super wash and silk. Um, and yeah, it just sort of lost all shape. And because of the round yoke, it doesn't have a lot of ability to hold itself in, I think with the silk content too. So it's not a very suitable sweater and it doesn't, it's quite large on my mom and quite loose. So I am planning on frogging this sweater and I am using it for a different pattern, which I have started with the leftovers, which I have started with the leftovers from um, the skeins that I had. So I have this much cast on. This I cast on, what was it? January 4th. So this is one of the like four sweaters I cast on at the beginning, end of the year slash beginning of this year. Um, and this is going to be uh, the Stockbridge DK by Isolde Teague. I think, um, I mean, I've knit this sweater twice for myself. So not the DK version, but the fingering white version. So I know it's a good pattern um, and it is, it's shaped very well and nicely fitted. Um, and I think because uh, you do a seam at the shoulder and the sleeve is picked up, it should have more structure at those areas to be able to compensate for the drapiness of the silk content. So that's, I mean, it's kind of like a sweater mustache, slight, I don't know. Um, yeah, so it started, um, it's waiting in the wings for me to finish one of the things that are like, finish something that's uh, that I'm actively working on. So it's technically started, but not gone very far. And I haven't frogged the other sweater yet. So, and I am already thinking it'll be better because I'm using a much smaller needle size than what I worked um, for the other one. And I did gauge swatch before starting the sweater. So um, yeah, I think the fabric will be good. There should be no surprises. Uh, next. I'm going in order, in reverse order of when I started these things for the most part. Okay, which means I should talk about these ones next. Uh, oh, I didn't grab the other sock that goes with this. Okay, so just, let's just pretend that you know that I have a finished sock. 
It has contrast for the heel and the toe. Um, these I have started in October. These were supposed to be part of um, Amy For Florence's festive sock along, but I just didn't have a lot of energy. I just, you know, didn't finish a lot at that point of the year. Um, I was, yeah, tired, I guess. Um, so this is actually a Christmas sock. This is using the Stranded Dye Works Christmas colorway for this past Christmas, which was um, Zooming Home for the Holidays. And I combined it with a mini that I had on hand that I don't remember the color of. Um, yeah, which was similar to the mini that was in the sock sets, which I didn't manage to snag. Um, straightforward uh, stockinette sock with a heel flap and gusset, um, working cuff down, which is sort of my default. Um, and alternate, I usually alternate back between um, Magic Loop and DPNs. So this is a Magic Loop. And the next one I'm going to show you is on DPNs. These socks. This yarn was like an impulse buy when I went to um, a yarn store here in Edmonton. This is an opal colorway that I had really liked that I think the Fat Squirrel had knit up a pair of socks in, which I really enjoyed. I believe she called this section like the ostrich skin section. Um, and so I had started these immediately after buying the yarn because I really liked it. And then I just haven't been knitting a lot of socks. I haven't been finishing a lot of socks. I think I finished one pair of socks around Christmas time. Otherwise, um, yeah, these just have been hanging out. So I started these, let's see, I think these were the ones that I started in August. And um, this is the first sock, so they're going slowly, but I'll get to them. They'll be my sock for when I want to work on a sock and have time for that. Okay, next is um, my third Stockbridge cardigan for myself, which uh, again, if you've seen some of my other episodes, you might have seen this one before. Um, I've dubbed this my Earthsea cardigan because the color that I'm working with is this wonderful color from Jameson and Smith, um, which just has a number associated with it that I have dubbed um, Earthsea blue because it kind of shifts in different lights between blue, green, and slightly purplish. It has heathers of all of those colors in it. So, uh, yeah, I I happened to be reading the Earthsea books um, when I started this cardigan and it really felt like the sort of color a wizard would wear because it um, changes all the time. So this hasn't got, I haven't worked on this um, in the past few months. As you can see, it's probably similar to the last time that you saw it. Um, and yeah, it's just sort of waiting along with these other projects right now. And, um, okay, where did I put this one? Oh, this one's here. And then the final sweater in the category of waiting is um, this sweater, which I recently picked up again. This is the Valdal Damacosta by, I believe, Sandness design that I am knitting out of Briggs and Little Sport and Jameson's of Shetland uh, double knitting in fuchsia. And the Briggs and Little Sport is a sheep's gray. These are both yarns that I had in my stash. And I, uh, yeah, I've, I mean, I began this in 2019, I believe December of 2019. And I picked this up again and was working on it with the idea that if I could get it done, then maybe I could cast on another color work cardigan that I am keen to work on. Um, so I'm at the point I've already put in steaks for the sleeves. So I have maybe about this much more to go of the body before I can cut it open and do the sleeves. So this has been sort of cruising along. It's got a big chunk on it since the last time you've seen it. 
And yeah, I'm eager to get back to it at some point, but it's just not a priority at the moment. So those are all my sort of semi-active projects that are just waiting for uh, my attention. Okay, our next section. These are sort of um, Well, I'm using sort of the categories that Ravelry has, which is like in progress, hibernating, although I've subdivided those into different types of hibernating projects. So we're now into the hibernating section. Um, the next thing is uh, this cowl. This is the Posa Cowl by Isolde Teague. Um, as you can see, I'm maybe like 5% started here. Um, and it's out of a beautiful yarn. This is um, Even Tinier and Aperna by A Verb for Keeping Warm, which is a beautifully soft yarn. This is left over from a sweater I knit a few years ago. This I started last January. Um, and yeah, I just never really got very far with it. Um, this I had last year around this time, I had made a plan for what the larger yarn quantities that I had on hand and I made a big list of things and I got excited by some of the projects on this list and I was, and this was one of them having made plans for some yarn that I have, um, in my stash or wool pantry or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, that's how this one got started and it's just been hanging out. So I'll get to it hopefully soonish. Um, the other thing that I started fairly recently that you would have seen that I was really excited about as my advent project um, is my mini star blanket. Now, as you can see, I've collected the materials for it, um, other than the Advent mini skeins that I was going to use, I've got some um, lovely sheep shades in a variety of different yarns that I'm using for this project. And I have four squares done and a fifth one in progress. Um, and I would love to get back to this at some point. Um, I don't know. I mean... I'm not making like I have to do these projects in this specific order. I'm kind of just having them because like, again, I knit with my moods, right? So if I don't feel like working on something, I don't really like to force myself to work on it. But uh, I mean, this I'm trying to work from projects that I have rather than starting new things all the time. So there's a little bit of rules, I guess. So um. I don't know when I'll get to this. Maybe I'll pick it up here and there and just do a square um, because it's, I mean, they're modular, right? I can just work on one at a time and then sew it all up at a later time. And yeah, so these I'm knitting, so these are modular. As you can see, I knit um, these little flying geese units, which end up being the points on the stars. So I start with that and then I can pick up and knit some of the other parts of the square um, off of those so that I only end up with about three seams, which yeah, is nice. And I've been whip stitching these together, which actually is a nice way of putting squares together because it's quite stretchy and flexible um, and it's not terribly visible. It doesn't leave like a big seam or anything. So I'm happy with how that is turning out. Okay. Um, okay, this is a project that's been sitting around for a while. I started this back in January of 2018. And the, this is the first of a pair of mittens um, for my mom. And then I'm working out of the purple is uh, a sock yarn that I had like a, a mass produced sock yarn. And then the pink is a, an alpaca or baby llama. I think it's alpaca. So this is, 
you know, I, this is an improvised design based on somebody else's project on Ravelry. Um, I adapted, I made the chart and then I adapted it for the gauge I was getting on these mittens. Um, I don't know. They just, oh, this is like the, the second, the second time I'm making this pattern. I made it a little bit different on the edges and I don't know. I think it was just the gauge is a little bit firm with the yarns that I'm using. So it was a little hard on my hands. I think that's why I put them down. Um, but yeah, I should finish those and hopefully soon. Uh, yeah, so because I already have like a mitten, it just needs a thumb and then should be straightforward to knit the other one. Anyway, I don't usually stop halfway through a project like this, but I guess my motivation wasn't really there to finish it. Uh, another thing. Okay, the next one is something I started in July of 2017. And I picked this up last year and worked on it a bit, quite a bit. So I think it got stalled because I was at the point where I needed to get some more yarn. And then last year I bought the extra yarn. So, but then we went to Mexico. That's why it got put down again, because this is a big thing to be taking down and bringing back in a suitcase. So it sort of sat around, but I would like to get this, um, to continue working at this at some point um, in the next year. And these, this is the Weekender blanket pattern. Uh, I don't remember the designer off the top of my head again. Oh, well, well. Um, and I'm using different weights of DK yarn that I bought locally, uh, here. There's some are alpaca and some are superwash wool. And yeah, I picked out the palette and then got some reinforcements of the different colors to be able to have enough to finish. So and the idea of this blanket was to replace a, uh, an acrylic blanket that I had made, um, that it lives at the lake, uh, that I made when I was in university the first time, like during my undergrad, which would be, it feels like it's like 2001, 2002, area era so when I made that blanket and like none of the ends are woven in I just kind of left them and I've since realized that like the one thing that you can do on crochet is you can sort of work end ends as you go or as you can see on this one um other than like I've been leaving the ends on the ones uh, on the ones that I, as I'm working on them and every once in a while I'll just go in and work in all the ends on all of them so that I don't have a whole bunch to do at the end. So most of the ends are worked in on this project. And this is actually a lot further along than I thought it was. So it's a good quarter, quarter I would say, of the blanket. Like I've, I've, I determined this is the width that I want it to be. And then I'll just make it as long for a throw. And that'll be that. So hopefully I can at least make some headway on this if I don't get it all finished. Cause you're gonna, you're gonna find out that I have, like this is one of a few blankets that I've got going on. Um, yeah, okay. Next I bring you a project that I started in 2015. Uh, this is part of I put the pattern in here so I'd know where it was. This was, um, I had made one of these dolls for the yarn store where I worked. Um, and I had enough yarn to make it and I was in the middle of making a second one for myself. So this is sort of in progress and you can see I'm at the stage of um, these little rosettes get crocheted and then sewn onto the doll's head. So I'm in the middle, which is kind of a hard step to do. Um, so I'm in the middle of that. I do have uh, a few rosettes ready to go. I have, this is the little life preserver bits that she has. Here's um, a little pom-pom. 
and oh this is this another little tiny pom-pom and then I think this is her hat that the pom-pom gets sewn to so I have a lot of the pieces for this doll it just kind of got stuck in the pudding together oh and here's a tiny penguin <laughs> This was the year that I was really into crocheting little Emmy Gurumis. And um, yeah, I was using some sort of old stock um, cottons that we had at the store. Fingering weight cottons that nobody was really interested in. So ha <laughs> ha, to keep that guy out, I like him. So that's this mermaid. It's uh, yeah, it's at the stage where it kind of looks like a sex toy. Okay, and then the other thing, the next project after that, um, is something is my oldest project that I have that's not been finished, um, which is a crocheted Afghan or crocheted blanket, I should say. Afghan's not a nice word to use, term to use for a blanket, and these are. This is, yeah, started back in 2009, and this is crocheted hexagons. I call this my jelly bean afghan because of the colors that I started with. I'll just show you the box because they're in all kinds of different stages. And I think these were leftover DK and worsted weight is what I was using for these. Sort of scrappy blankets. And I do, what is this? Is this one line? Of hexagons oh I think this is two I have two line of hexagons that I've actually um, I started doing crochet as you go in the final round to connect them together so I have two lines of that plus a number of other completed hexagons in various colors um, so I would say this is I feel like there's at least a quarter of a blanket here and I definitely have like DK slash worsted weight scraps that I can add to this. And it's mostly alpaca, I think, that's in here and some super wash. I mean, yeah. So that's definitely like ready to go with things at all sorts of stages of being, you know, available to make into other things, into hexagons. So that's, again, I can make good headway into that. All right. Shall I talk about the third project that's hanging out in this box? Mm, okay, I'll leave this guy for a little bit later. Cause, well, and I might change my mind about what I'm going to do with this guy. Okay, now that I see what state he's in. So this is um a toy that's in pieces in progress i guess i picked it up at some point and started putting the pieces together and stuffing them this um uh, a friend of mine from montreal is a um knitted toy pattern designer um who goes as uh her website's fuzzy mitten and uh that's the name that she designs under and i Every once in a while she would post a picture of like this really cute toy and I would volunteer to test it for her because I wanted an excuse to knit a, a really cute toy. So this is from her, um, I think it's Scrappy Chaps pattern. Um, and this, I actually ended up knitting every toy from that pattern. There was a rhinoceros, an elephant, and this is the zebra. As you can see, I never finished the zebra. He's in pieces. And I think I got, I didn't gauge swatch and it's kind of loose. This is with scrap cotton and a scrap wool that I had lying around in my stash. Um, and yeah, it's just been hanging out in pieces. Um, yeah, even, I mean, just put it together, you know? Like it's, just put it together. Like this other toy, just put it together. You're so close. It's almost a thing. So I think those are definitely achievable to um, to finish. Ooh. 
where's the top for this? Oof. And this is a box left over from, uh, the, I got these nice boxes. My dishes, my mom uh, bought me a nice set of um, like actual fancy dishware over the course of a few years of birthdays and Christmases. And so this is the where I got these boxes, which are just too good for projects and stuff. So I have kept them. Even though my dishes are in storage right now, I have the box. All right, so I have this category. Uh, so that's all for the hibernating um, projects that I would like to finish. My next category is hibernating but might frog. Um, and what... And one of these, the first of this project is something I started in April of last year. And that is, um, this is my Ripple Bralette, which I started out of some Ocean by the Sea yarn that I had, which even still smells very, very nice. And I don't know, I'm in like three by three ribbing land and I just, I tried it on and needed more height and I just am not sure that I'm gonna wear this garment. So I think I'm just gonna frog it and have one less thing on my mind in terms of projects. So nothing wrong with the pattern, nothing wrong with the yarn. I mean, the only thing about the pattern was I found the gauge to be kind of like, I actually tightened up the gauge and I find it quite loose. I wouldn't wear it just as a bralette because you can, I mean, you can see nipples through it. I mean, so it would definitely not be something that I would wear above my clothes, even if I felt we comfortable wearing a bralette as a top because of, because of the nip issue. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, my plan was to have this as like a layering, uh, piece, but I think if I were to make like a little wool undershirt, I think it would be better to have more of a crop top so that, you know, my belly could stay warm. So I might uh, make a different, I might make the, my secret crop um, that Jessie May designed um, last summer instead. Okay, so that's that one. What else did I wanna, what else is ready to frog? Oh yes, okay. A couple more blankets. Yes, that's how many blankets I have started. Although this one is like barely started. I don't, I don't know that we can really call this a project at this point. Basically, I've collected a bunch of mini skeins. That's the most projecty part of it. I have collected a bunch of mini skeins into this project bag. As you can see, there's a lot in there. And um, I guess I settled on a pro on a pattern. You know, I tested out, do I like a fingering weight hexagon? Or there's these, I, uh, these are for the Battenberg blanket. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There, you can kind of see it there. So you can see I've knit like two and I think from a mini skein from like a 20 gram mini skein, I'd be able to get like five or six of these. So I think the plan was just to, you know, churn out a whole bunch of mini squares of these mini squares. And then at some point decide what the solid color was going to be, because basically the Battenberg blanket is, you know, mini square or like these mini squares. And then the in-between squares would be a solid color. Um, like in a Battenberg cake, it would be a cream or something like that. I don't know that I was planning to do cream, but um, yeah, I don't know. So, I mean, two out of probably 500 tiny squares. So at the moment, I think this is like in the sort of nebulous, not quite a project yet. So it's easy for me. I mean, I was looking at this last January, but it's not really even started. So this is not even really a project. I'm just going to leave that in my like hibernating projects on Ravel Ravelry. Um, and then, oh, where did I put it? Here, here. Okay. 
I have no project entry for this, so I do not know when I started it. Um, I know what apartment I was living in when I started this, so I, I, I think it's from sometime in 2010, maybe, at the latest. Um, I guess I should look at when I knit this the sweater out of this Malabrigo yarn because this was leftover. Um, that would probably be a good thing. And so this, this project is from a Japanese crochet book that I can't find right now. So I imagine it's in storage somewhere. And um, I think it's, it's like a coverlet where, um, uh, it's a coverlet where everything's one color. Um, but I decided with the way that it's constructed to make these sort of central circles. Or is there one that looks a little bit better so you can sort of see what's happening? These central circles and then um, you kind of, you crochet the outsides and you crochet them together at the same time. So I started doing the crochet together to see how I liked it. And I mean, it's very cute. Um, this Malabrigo looks very pretty and I had made all these centers out of various random um, neutral colors that I had lying around as you can see in various different DK slash worsted weight kind of weights and yeah but I mean I can't even find the pattern I don't know that I have enough of any like enough centers I think I used all of my neutral colors for the what's here and I don't think that's enough to do an entire coverlet um, and I don't know that I have enough of the Malabrigo. I have like two skeins of this Malabrigo. So I don't know that that's enough to make an entire blanket. And I mean, I can't even find the pattern. So yeah, I think this will be, I might um, scavenge these centers and remake them uh, to use in the jelly bean afghan. Yeah, I think that's, that's my idea for what to do with this one. So it was a fun, like two days of, of looking at crochet charts, I guess, because that's the, the Japanese craft books were very popular at the time. And like, they're all in Japanese, which I don't read, but because of the style, um, the style that the patterns are written in lots of charts, with small amounts of written um, instruction, you can, like, they're possible um, to follow even if you don't read Japanese. Or, like, you could use Google Translate. Like, those, I mean, even since 2010, Google Translate has improved a ton. So, um, you wouldn't even get a stra that strange of a translation. Okay, so that's my hibernating but will probably frog section slash um that's not even yet a project in the case of this of the scrappy squares blanket um oh there's one that i didn't even didn't even grab yet okay i guess i'm going to pause and go grab that project oh. okay so this is something that i started in November of 2013, um, when uh, me and a group of friends in, when I still lived in Montreal, we got together to make Christmas tree ornaments as kind of an exchange, kind of just a craft day. I'm just holding up this like object, this group of objects. They And so I found a pattern, we all just found like different patterns for different knitted things. Um, and then made some and like gave them to each other. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> and I found this pattern for these tiny mittens. Um, I have done other tiny things. I think the first thing I made was some tiny socks that I got as like a little kit from somebody in like an exchange or something. Um, and yeah, 
these are these diamonds that I made out of like leftover sort of sock yarn scraps. And I guess I'm gonna show you each one. There's like maybe 40 here. And I guess I, I had this grand plan after I made a bunch of these, cause they were fun to make, that this is what I was gonna do with all of my sock yarn scraps. Cause like, look at this. These are just like self-striping you know, mass produced self striping yarns, but like each mitten shows up a little bit differently. Um, and the stripes are different in each one, but they all kind of go together as a little group. Like, look at this guy. I would love that as a real mitten. I mean, honestly, as a, you know, I, I mean, this, they are real mittens, they have thumbs, but like, that would actually fit on a, on my sized hand, which is not which is admittedly is small, but not quite this small. Um, and so, yeah, I had this big idea that I was gonna do this with all of my sock yarn scraps and then I would make a huge garland out of mini mittens. So, um, yeah, so that's what these are. There's a whole bunch here. There's some that fell on the floor and then there's some other guys over here. And then I dropped another one. Um, so I guess I could make them into a mitten garland, just knit some I-cord. I mean, there are some here that are sort of a pair that kind of don't go with their friends that could just be like a little, what I did for when I was, you know, making mittens to give to my friends was I just made a little I-cord between two mittens and then that could just hang on the tree. So I could just do that with a lot of these pairs too, make a little I-cord connection. Oh gosh, there's stuff all over the floor now. Oh boy. And I'm just going to clean it up now. This, I think that goes to the zebra. Oh boy. Now I'm making a big mess. I mean, I always make a mess when I podcast because there's just piles of stuff everywhere. That's just how it goes. Yeah, so this is my mini mitten brigade that's just been living in this project bag that I made on a different craft day with my friends um that never got finished that got finished I think like a couple years ago anyway I do have I mean is that a, I feel like that's like an Aquarius trait is like you start a whole bunch of things and then the, you know never they never get finished so that's just kind of my life and I'm not even gonna get into like quilting whips and cross stitch because yeah I mean, cross stitch, I'm better at finishing things, but I have at least three that are in progress at the moment. And quilts, I mean, I ha I don't even have a quilt. I haven't quilted in four years. And the last time I quilted was for a class. So that that's like its own whole category, of kind of making art quilts. So like, oof. I feel like there's like four quilts that are in progress, including like my crazy you know, 10, over 10 year project of hand piecing hexagons, which, yeah, definitely only need one hand piece project at a time in my books. Okay. So that's with the, I'm not sure what to do with those mittens. So, but it's also like, they're sort of a Christmas tree, Christmas decoration kind of item. So I can also procrastinate that. I can just like keep it in mind of what do I want to do with those. Um, the stripey zebra was also in that category, but, you know, having looked at what state it's at, um, I actually think I am going to move that to the, um, would like to finish category. And, okay, the last thing is a conundrum. Um, it's something I started in 2009. As old as the jelly bean afghan, I guess, or not quite that old. Anyway, uh, this is um, the start of a dress. I mean, I guess like the thing that people do is they knit or some people knit their wedding dress, right? And this is definitely looking like that in its, you know, undyed silk state status. This was a collaboration. Um, I kind of improvised this design from uh, charts that I had in a vintage pattern book 
um, from the 50s, vintage lace. It was like lace tablecloths. And I think at the time, people were taking the patterns from that book and making them into shawls. Um, and so this, I had, I think I had shown this designer. I mean, he's like a clothing designer, uh, not necessarily a knitwear designer. Um, and so I think he had seen the book and really liked this particular pattern, which is like from the, a big rose Ta uh, doily tablecloth thing and so um, I used different elements he had this idea to make this dress and so we just used different elements of it and um, I knit it up and we got to the point of where it was time to do the skirt and the plan was that my brother was going to continue the skirt on his knitting machine um, because knitting a, a giant skirt flared skirt is like that's a lot of freaking knitting, man. Um, and you can see that never happened. So this dress got um, passed back to me. And I don't know that the designer either remembers about it or is interested in it anymore. I don't have a need for like a wedding dress or like such a fancy dress. Um, but I also, as you can see, like it's quite far along. The bodice is done. So if I just, I mean... Yes, there's a lot of knitting in this skirt, but it would also be doable to finish it. So that's where I'm in a big, like, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what to do with this. Um, so, I mean, I got it back a couple years ago from my brother who never did the skirt. And, um... I mean, we both fell out of touch with the designer who was, who was, was the, uh, uh, making the decisions on this project. So I don't know. I'm like, I've tried it on. And even though I'm not a skinny person, like it does, I mean, it's lace, right? So it does stretch to, you know, fit my curves. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not even in a serious relationship, so I don't know that it makes sense to ha already have a wedding dress. <laughs> like, that's a little creepy. Um, I'm creeped out by that. So we'll just leave it in this weird, like, half-finished state for the rest of time instead. <laughs> I just can't bring it to, like, rip it all out. I mean, yes, it's lovely silk, but I, there's so much, I spent a lot of time knitting this. Like, anyway. If anybody needs a wedding dress, um, I don't know. I don't know if I would just give it away. And I like, I have, I have the yarn to like do the skirt. There's like, oh, there's a lot of yarn here. So, so I think I'm going to continue to just leave this in a bag and be like, and not throw it out because... A lot of work has gone into it, even though um, its final status is, like, uncertain. Um, yeah. It's in this cute, like, rice bag. Back when they actually made them out of cotton, this one got turned into a project bag. Basmati rice product... Pr Produce of Pakistan. Qualité supérieure. Okay. Um, okay, do I have... What else? I think that's it. Is that really it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we're left, we're left on the note of, like, creepy half-already-done maybe wedding dress. <laughs> yeah, um... I mean, I don't even like the idea of if I were to get married, like of having a wedding dress that's white. And so I would definitely dye it a color somehow or like have somebody dye it for me. I mean, that was the plan to knit it in white and to dye it after in some capacity. Um, yeah. I mean, like the whole white wedding dress is just such like a, I mean, it's a product of the modern 
wedding industry, right, and popularized by Queen Victoria, along with this whole idea that like a wedding is a huge pageantry thing. So yeah, I mean, I, this is all just to say that I mean, I'm a giant introvert and anyway, and would definitely not want to be like walking in to a whole group of in front of a whole group of people and saying things. Not my style whatever I'm not even in really in a relationship this is like a ridiculous what if conversation but here we are um so I'm just gonna leave that there and be like okay so uh if you have any ideas for any of my random projects including the maybe it's a wedding dress dress um like let me know <laughs> and uh yeah I got a lot of projects here so we'll, uh, we'll see how they progress. And like, that's, I mean, out of 20, 20 things, there's like two that I'm going to pull out or frog two that I'm going to rip up, rip out and use yarn for other things. So that's 18. It's going to be a busy year. I like, I've already got knitting for the year. I don't even need to look at like the internet ever again in relation to, um, knitting and that's like I mean I have I also don't need to be buying yarn I don't there is a look uh, like a couple skeins of self-striping um sock yarn that's uh that I may have pre-ordered but uh, like definitely no sweater quantities um yeah unless I knit some things up which, as you can see, like, I don't even need to dip into my stash. I've got all these projects that are just waiting, hanging out. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but I like these projects. I like them. I do. I looked at them. I, it's just, yeah. It's funny to just have your whole year planned out like that. So let's, okay, let's, let's think about this. 20 things two of which I'm going to rip out, or three, no, three I'm going to take out, three that I'm not sure what, or two that I'm not sure what the hell to do with, three that I'm going to rip out. Well, three, this, well, the third one is like barely even started, so it's not even like a thing yet, so it's already basically frogged. I mean, it hasn't even gone anywhere. So two things to rip out. Uh, some things I don't know what to do with. So that leaves 14 things. 14! That's not so bad. Three of which I'm already working on. So 14 things. That's, that's not so bad. I mean, and there are some blankets and I mean, if I can get the blankets to a point where they're looking like they might get finished, I might save those for Stash Dash because maybe I'll actually participate in Stash Dash this year. I don't know. Or maybe just my life is Stash Dash. My whole year is dash dash. I don't know. This is just me rambling. Um, I haven't really been reading books. Um, uh, sorry, my nose is itchy. Um, I haven't been really, really been reading books in the past little while. I have been playing Animal Crossing. Um, partially because, well, I picked it up because like the the stuff that was going on before Christmas looked pretty cute um, and I wanted to see what that was going to be like and then um, someone I knew from Montreal many years ago um, who has lived in England I think like 10 years now she gave her children Animal Crossing for Christmas and so they didn't have any islands that they could they didn't know anybody who had the game who like they could go visit but they really wanted to try it so they came to my island and I was showing them around and I was like here's this half finished project over here and here's this half finished project over there and look at all of these flowers that I have too many of that I haven't dealt with and I just was like okay let's deal with some of this stuff so um I have been I do not have a five star island. I've been sitting at four stars for a little while. Um, but I have continued with my theme 
Um, when I was thinking of a name for my island, I just used like a reference from Alice in Wonderland. Um, my island is um, Tulgi, would be Tulgi Wood, um, but there wasn't enough characters to have that. So I have Tulgi, Tulgi Ill is the name of my island. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've been sort of putzing around, moving stuff around, made a little bit of plan of what the different areas on my island should be like, actually set up the Hansel and Gretel path with like ice cream lights beside it to be like, you know, inviting to children for them to go to my witch's house, um, which is my second character. I mean, I haven't finished her house. I haven't figured out my house. I'm, uh, but I mean, I got some good DIYs. So I have put, put, I did some time traveling in November to get some, um, to try and get some mushrooms and some mushroom DIYs. So I put mush lamps everywhere on my island, pretty much. Um, and I also got the DIY for Nova Lights. I've been doing some time traveling and like, um, uh, getting lots of art from Red. And I happened to have a day where I had Red and Celeste come to my island. So I got a bunch of, uh, Celestial DIYs at the same time. So yeah, I've been, I've been having some fun doing some light che cheating on Animal Crossing. And, um, I even set up like a dream roster of what my villagers should be like, um, related to my theme of fairy tales slash Alice in Wonderland. So I've been slowly working on that. Um, at the moment I'm debating between what hamster to have to, to be the sort of Tweedledee slash Tweedledum character on my island. Um, uh, the, the main suggestion was Hamlet and Rodney, um, but there's this hamster named Graham who has like servers in his house and cardboard furniture and, you know, on this Facebook group that I'm a part of, they were joking that he's like, you know, the master of the dark web or something. So I kind of think that I need, um, this giant nerd on my island. And also I heard that Eunice has a laundromat for a house. So, I mean, even though it's not really related to my theme, I kind of want to have Eunice too. Um, because like a laundromat, that's, you have to have a laundromat on the island, right? How do they do, how do they wash their clothes? They don't all have washers and dryers. They don't even have basements, the villagers. Anyway, um, the, yeah, this random, you, I mean, if you don't even play Animal Crossing, that was probably not even interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, we got new mugs for Christmas, like three new mugs, three or four. Uh, my mom's been looking at a lot of pottery online to get ideas and some of it came home with her. So, uh, we've got a kiln for Christmas in terms of pottery news and random what we're talking about stuff. Um, I mean, if you're not into all this random tatter, I understand. Um, I feel like saying it, so there you go. You can have it if you like. If not, I'll see you another time. I appreciate, uh, you sticking with me this far. So, yeah, we got, I, my mom bought a kiln for Christmas. We've done, which, um, all of us were secretly afraid was going to burn the house down. We have fired it and it has not burned the house down. So we are feeling better about that. Um, yeah, so we're in the middle of doing glazing on a, the first set of bisqueware that came out of the kiln uh, to be able to fire it up again, um, which maybe we'll do in the next week or so. It's been fun. I yesterday was a big spaz and like went to go shake this um this thing of glaze and then but the lid wasn't really on it so I just ended up shooting spraying glaze all over myself <laughs> which is when I fired myself from glazing for the day so <laughs> that's that's how my week has been going um yeah and in the next well week or so, I'll be starting up my final, um, 
my final term of my Master's of Library and Information Studies degree, which is pretty exciting. So I am looking forward to that. Although like I'm not looking forward to the whole looking for a job during a pandemic thing, but I mean that has to happen at some point. So yeah, so this is my big project for the year is to try and get through all of these whips or at least some of the whips or like acknowledge that there are whips. I guess that's that's what it is. Let's acknowledge that there are whips and uh, we'll see what the list looks like next year maybe. That's as much, yeah, that's as much as I feel I can commit to at the moment. <laughs> anyway, I know I think I'll I'll at least get through the ones that are active and that are waiting and I feel like I can anyway let's we'll see how it goes all right um I hope everybody has uh, an okay week and I'll see you next time which I'm not sure when that will be well I mean you I was doing sort of weekly slash every two weeks this is kind of like every month. I'm not sure what my, I I sort of have to wait to see what um, my term is going to be like. Um, we're having some interesting sunlight effects happening right here. Um, <laughs> all right, I'll see you next time.